So, uh, my office, uh, called the Economic and Trade Office, I hate the title, but uh, our constitution says that our overseas offices shall be called Economic and Trade Offices, so unless I can persuade uh, Beijing to change our constitution, I'm stuck with it. But it really is the, the government's representative office uh, for Australia and New Zealand, so yes, economic and trade matters are important, but we do a lot more in terms of uh, promoting Hong Kong, uh, promoting uh, exchanges in terms of arts, culture, sports, education, so on and so forth. Uh, in Hong Kong House, uh, in Sydney, apart from my office and uh, Invest Hong Kong, we also have the Trade Development Council, and the, the Hong Kong Tourism Board, so it really is the one-stop shop uh, for Hong Kong, uh, for, for Australia and New Zealand. Hong Kong and New Zealand uh, have one or two similarities. Um, uh, obviously we're uh, slightly different uh, in size. Hong Kong uh, is 1,100 square kilometres. Uh, when I arrived it was 1,000 square kilometres. So it's the only place that I've known that's grown by 10% uh, in, in 30 years. Uh, and that uh, is, is a result of reclamation, um, largely for the, uh, the airport. Um, so you can see, uh, you know, we've got some similarities, some differences. Our population is just over 7 million, yours is just over 4. Um, but. We're, we're, we're similar in terms of our approach to, to trade and economic relations, very open, free trade, um, keen on uh, uh, promoting uh, internationalisation as much as possible. For those that you didn't know, Hong Kong was a British colony, and that uh, helps explain an awful lot of things uh, if you didn't already know. And what are those differences? Well, there's a whole series of features that, in the Chinese context, are fairly unique, if not completely unique, to Hong Kong. We have a high degree of autonomy in all matters except foreign affairs and defence, which is one reason why my office is not an embassy. Um, we've got our own police, customs, immigration, tax system, uh, judiciary, etc., etc. Um, our own legislature, our own legal system, our own laws. Uh, we operate under the, the common law system, the same as you do here. Our commercial law uh, is pretty much identical to yours. We operate uh, in, in English, particularly in, in, in business. Um, and with our own currency, um, if you make, make profits in Hong Kong, if you make money, you can repatriate them very easily, no problems with uh, uh, with getting your profits out of out of Hong Kong. Quickly touching on the performance, um, we've been doing pretty well. Not fantastic, but pretty well. Um, most most economies would be would be uh, very happy with this. This is a little bit little bit disappointing for us in some ways. Um, Economy's been doing okay. Uh, most people would be very happy with 5% uh, growth. Um, unemployment, uh, pretty much at full employment. Uh, <coughs> but the, the forecast for, for the coming year is, um, uh, is, is basically that we, we don't know what's going to happen. So many uncertainties on the international horizon with what's happening in the States, what's happening in Europe. Um, who knows? So, for the first time that I can recall in over 30 years, our financial secretary in his budget gave a 2% range for, for his growth forecast, and that was considerably down from, from what we enjoyed last year. That's just a uh, uh, a slide showing the, the growth, uh, GDP growth, uh, over the last decade or so. Um, uh, as you can see in Hong Kong, we do nothing uh, in small measures. We either go down like crazy or we go up like crazy, but we, we rarely just plateau. Um, and you will understand from seeing this slide why uh, Recently, we were talking about a, a V-shaped recovery. 
So, I think the important thing, if you're looking to do business in Hong Kong, uh, to remember is that Hong Kong is a services centre. 93% of our GDP derived from services. We manufacture almost nothing, like 30 years ago when it was textiles and clothing, watches, flowers, plastic goods, lights, uh, uh, light electrical goods and so on. They were all gone. Firstly in China into Shenzhen and then inland into Shenzhen and uh, now further inland and beyond China to, to other places like Bangladesh and, and so on. Uh, we manufacture almost nothing, we grow almost nothing, we catch almost nothing. So we have to purchase everything we consume and, and I think that is uh, a very important message for New Zealand and, and Maori businesses in particular. We often talked of Hong Kong in years gone by as being an entrepot and there we were talking about it being an entrepot for goods. I think it's still an entrepot, but it's now very much an entrepot for services. And we'll touch on that a little bit more later. Basically, we focus, or the business sector has focused on trade and logistics. The port and the airport are still very important. Uh, the port, uh, whilst it's been overtaken, is still sort of number three, number four in the world in term of, terms of container throughput, and it's still growing in terms of throughput. The airport, it's Hong Kong airport, is the world's number one international airport for passengers, and also the world's number one, or number two, depending on uh, which report you're looking at, for international air cargo movements. And we've just uh, had approval from our executive council to pursue detailed planning for the construction of a third runway at our airport. So uh, we're, we're hoping to, 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 to develop and maintain uh, our position at the airport as well. Um, financial services, um, you'll hear a lot more about this. Uh, basically Hong Kong is uh, developing both as China's financial center for international finance uh, and we hope um, that we will become and retain our position as uh, Asia's number one uh, financial centre. Tourism very important to us and then all the business and professional services. The six emerging industries are, these, are those areas where we anticipate that we will be able to develop uh, in, in the coming years and we're looking to attract uh, investment uh, and opportunities in these areas as we think that uh, we, we have uh, many advantages and opportunities to sell these products and services outside uh, into, into the mainland and beyond in the coming years. So what are Hong Kong's advantages? As they say, location, location, location. Uh, we we have a very healthy rivalry with Singapore, as I'm sure many of you know. The Singaporeans would never admit it, but they've given an arm and a leg to be in Hong Kong's location. Um, five hours flight from uh, four fifths, or half the half the world's population, and pretty much. All the rapidly expanding economies in the world are all within four or five hours flight of Hong Kong. And you know, with, a, with our wonderful airports and connectivity, it's a great place to, uh, to be located. This is the bit I like. We have a low and simple tax system. Corporate tax, only 16.5%. You only pay tax on revenue derived in Hong Kong. So if you've got a headquarters in Hong Kong but you're doing business in China and elsewhere, we don't tax you on any of that. We reckon that only about 10% of companies in Hong Kong pay any tax at all. <laughs> Individuals, a maximum 15%. And I reckon uh, there's not uh, 
not that, all that many people in Hong Kong being the maximum there either. No capital gains tax, no tax on uh, uh, on um, interest, investments, no GST, no VAT, no service charge, no fringe benefits tax. We like it. <laughs> I like this slide as well. You can't read the details, but uh, normally Hong Kong likes to be number one in these international comparisons. Uh, on this one, we are third from the bottom, just up from Qatar and the United Arab Emirates, who seem to have some other source of revenue. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, 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 this, is, this is one occasion when I'm delighted that my good friends, the French, are number one at the top. Sadly, China is number two. And that, uh, well, I can't count that, uh, but you're, you're, you're in a healthy position. Not too bad at all. <coughs> I wouldn't dare to put Australia on the same, just in case there's any Australian spies in the audience. But uh, yeah, suffice to say that if you're looking to do business in China, there's obvious advantages to have your business headquartered in Hong Kong <coughs> to, to minimize your, uh, your, 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 your tax obligations. Uh, you will have heard this many times. I think it's now for the 18th year in succession. The Heritage Foundation has uh, found Hong Kong to be the freest economy in the world. Uh, this just reflects um, the the laissez-faire approach of the, the Hong Kong government for many, many years uh, and uh, our aim to, to make Hong Kong as business friendly as possible. So, Gateway to China, you can see on this uh, slide where we are located. Um, you'll notice that's Shanghai. A lot of people will talk about, you know, what about the competition with Shanghai? Um, my response to that is uh, competition is good. Uh, we don't shy away from that. Secondly, as the crow flies, Hong Kong and Shanghai are 1,000 kilometers apart. One serves the Yangtze River hinterland, and the other, Hong Kong, serves the Pearl River Delta hinterland. Um, and, uh, and I think an economy with 1.4 billion people can probably cope with two successful cities. So I, I don't see uh, <laughs> the competition with Shanghai issue as, as a major problem for us. You often hear people talking about the Pearl River Delta. Well, that's what it is. It's a part of Guangzhou province. And uh, in the last five <laughs> years or so, in a wide range of areas, there's been increasing uh, cooperation, particularly on economic and infrastructure issues, to, to make the Pearl River Delta um, a much more effective entity, and that includes uh, much of the province of Guangzhou, Macau, Special Administrative Region, and Hong Kong. And uh, that basically entails a population of I think about 60, 70 million people, uh, and is the, the fastest growing. Uh, a part of the, 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 the Chinese economy and with, with Hong Kong getting increasingly well connected <coughs> both physically and on a personal level with, uh, with that uh, delta. So strong links with the mainland. Um, I won't read all that out, you can read faster than I can talk, um, but still many uh, companies factories owned by Hong Kong people in China, we talk about about 100,000 and um, sorry about, yeah, about 100,000 factories in Hong Kong uh, employing uh, 10 million people, that's more, 
more than Hong Kong's population, uh, 7 million of course, uh, and large numbers of Hong Kong people working in the mainland, and increasingly so. <coughs> mentioned earlier, Hong Kong has been uh, the, the number three global financial center and the number one in Asia. Um, uh, as, as far as we can tell, um, this is a trend that is strengthening and growing and we, we hope to continue to uh, serve both the mainland and uh, the, the region as the, as the number one financial center. You'll have heard much talk about the internationalization of the renminbi, China's currency. Beijing designated Hong Kong as its first and so far only offshore uh, renminbi center. Um, the, the growth uh, in renminbi trade is, uh, is skyrocketing. Um, ultimately, uh, this will lead to the full convertibility of the renminbi. I've heard various predictions on the timing of that from sort of about 2018 to about 2030. Um, I have no idea. Uh, you, your guess is as good as mine, but I think it's going to happen. Um, beyond that, of course, some people are also talking about the, the possibility of the renminbi becoming uh, a reserve currency, but I think that uh, is, uh, is a long way uh, over the horizon. So, if I can just quickly touch on Hong Kong-New Zealand relations. Healthy, but with a lot more opportunity for growth, I think is, is the simple answer. Um, there's been an increase uh, in, in the growth rate since the, uh, uh, the free trade agreement was signed between Hong Kong and uh, New Zealand. Uh, but not uh, stratospheric, stratos stratospheric growth. Um, uh, but lots more potential. Um, this is part of the reason that uh, we're, we're here talking tonight is to, to try to increase that growth rate. It will not surprise you to see uh, that the main imports in Hong Kong from <coughs> New Zealand are, are in the primary products uh, for which you're so well known. The Free Trade Agreement, which we call the Closer Economic Partnership Agreement, and that came into force about uh, 15 months ago. Um, what it mainly does is to guarantee to New Zealand businesses exporting goods to, to Hong Kong that zero tariffs will be applied. Um, it also gives a number of other advantages in terms of the speed of clearance of goods going uh, through Hong Kong's port, uh, access to the government procurement uh, market in Hong Kong, uh, and gives uh, uh, access, secure access for various services sectors. A variety of other agreements have been uh, negotiated and signed in, in recent years, but negotiations and agreements between governments are of little use if <coughs> the private sector does not uh, take advantage of the opportunities that they present. So that's one of the messages that I'm trying to get across uh, in my travels, is to take advantage of these agreements that have been reached. They are there for you. I think it's very important to note the volume of visitors to Hong Kong. We've got a population of 7 million. Last year we had 42 million visitors, of which two thirds, or about 30 million, were from the mainland. They are the biggest spenders by a clear margin. They are purchasing quality branded products and high quality food and processed natural products for which New Zealand is in prime position to take advantage. If you are looking to attract 
mainland Chinese tourists to New Zealand. You can either go around the 1.4 billion people in China, in the many, many cities, trying to find those wealthy Chinese with an interest in overseas travel. Or you could go somewhere where wealthy Chinese, mainland Chinese, interested in travel, congregate and market to them there. I leave it to you to decide which is most efficient and cost effective. A lot of demand in Hong Kong for your products, particularly wine, and I've read some recent reports that uh, the reputation for New Zealand wine internationally is, is going through the roof. Chinese like to buy branded, high-quality um, high products with a good reputation, and I think you, you need to build on that, and there's wonderful opportunities there for you. Conclusion. Hong Kong is where you should be trying to operate. Thank you very much. <laughs>